everyone and welcome to another rubber dance design team tutorial and I'm going to show you how to create a snowy scene. Each month the lovely Bibby who owns rubber dance stamps and designs these gorgeous stamps uh, sets the design team a challenge and this month it was to use stencils with the new set of stamps and I'm using the Pine For You set and Christmas Greeting set to create this card as well as my own homemade stencils. So you can see here all the lovely stamps that I'll be using. They're two new sets to me. So I've got my Christmas greetings and my Pine For You set and I'm going to be using these pine branches to create my Christmas scene. Starting with a white square card base that measures 11 and a half inches by 5 and 3 quarter inches and is scored and folded in half at 5 and 3 quarter inches and a piece of teal card stock that measures five and one eighth of an inch and I'll cut another one later to go on the inside and my card topper measures five inches square and it's this piece that we'll be doing or creating our magical Christmassy snowy scene. So I'm sort of using a reverse stencil technique for this so I've cut out a three inch circle with my Cricut you could use a punch or perhaps draw around something and cut it out and I'm going to be using this to mask off the area that's my that could be a sun or it could be a moon the choice is yours. Next you want a piece of cardstock just a scrap piece of card that's slightly wider than your card base and you're going to tear a hill shape into that or you will if you can get going <laughs> it's quite a thick piece of card and then I'm just trying to mimic the shape of a hill now we're going to use this stencil in two different positions first of all I'm creating the horizon line so I'm deciding where I want that to be I want a lot of my moon sun not quite sure showing and then I'm just using little piece of sellotape to hold this strip of card in place making sure my moon is where I want it and then it's ready to start inking so I'm using a peacock feathers distress ink and I'm using an ink blending tool so you want to be quite light to start with so just pick up a little bit of ink and starting on the circle gradually blend that colour out so I'm moving from the sun outwards to start with see it changes sometimes it's the sun sometimes it's the moon <laughs> so I'm just rubbing that ink out from the inside of the sun towards the outside edge of the cardstock and once I'm happy with the colour I'm then going to ink the edges of the cardstock in the normal manner. Don't forget to make sure that you come up from the line which is going to become your horizon line. Um, that's where the torn paper is across your card strip. And then you're going to come in from the outside edge, inking as you normally would around the edge of the cardstock. And you can create a slightly darker colour on the outside of the panel. Once you're happy with the colour of your sky, you can remove your mask and you can see where you've got to so far. Now you can see it looks a little bit odd at the moment because we haven't got that full horizon line so we're going to put that right next. So you use the, I thought I was going to use the piece of mask that I tore off. As it happens you can use exactly the same mask, just flip it over. You can see here I'm just matching it up and then using the same tape to hold it in position. Now I did make a little bit of a mistake here and I've gone a little bit too exactly on that line. Just move up slightly and you'll avoid uh, seeing the mistake that I've made and you, you'll see that in just a moment. But what you're going to do now is exactly the same technique as you used on the sun. You're coming from that card stock and blending down onto the card underneath and you want to keep this quite light. We're just giving a illusion of hills so we don't want them too dark to match the sky we want them a little bit lighter than that 
So I'm just rubbing on a little bit of ink along that horizon line. Now, as I lift, lifted this piece of cardstock out of the way, I had a little bit of a white line where I hadn't quite lined things up properly. So I'm just moving it up again slightly and I'm going to carry on inking just to get rid of that little white shadow. So if you make sure that you're not, you're perhaps just slightly above rather than exactly on that initial first line, you will avoid making that white shadow. I've got rid of most of it and I know I'm going to be using a little bit of glitter so I'm going to leave it there and then I'm just going to move my mask down just tilting it slightly to create another couple of hills in the foreground of my picture so exactly the same technique rubbing that ink and using my torn edge as a mask I'm going to put another little hill in on this side And I think I could just do one more over here. So I've got a lovely snowy landscape in front of my sun or moon. And actually it even looks like clouds in front of the sun or moon. So you take your choice how you decorate it after this point, but I'm definitely trying to use this as a snowy set of hills in front of a... I'm going with sun. <laughs> I'll probably say moon again later. So at this point I just wanted to cover up all my ink and add some snow spots to the sky. So I'm just repositioning the two masks and then I'm going to sprinkle the sky with a little bit of water. So I'm just dipping my fingers in some water and then flicking them over that Distress ink. And Distress ink has, has the property that it reacts to water. So the ink is going to lift where those water spots are and you'll see in just a moment when I dab them off with a piece of kitchen roll that it just gives me some snowy dots and spots in my sky. So just keep working with that until you're happy with the amount of snowstorm that you've created and then you can remove your masks and you want to dry off your cardstock at this point. I'm using my heat gun to dry the cardstock and to set the distress ink. So this step is really important. Make sure you heat set that distress ink because if you don't, when you move on to embossing the um, little branches of fur, you'll find that the embossing powder sticks to the distress ink and you'll get a very messy effect indeed. So I've heat, heat set my distress ink and then I'm going to be using some little sprigs of fur to give the illusion that we're looking through the branches of a fir tree to the snowy scene beyond. So I'm inking up my branch of fur with a perfect medium ink pad. So that's the sticky ink that we need to hold our embossing powder. And then I'm adding this lovely green embossing powder to those little pine branches. So as I said, I'm trying to create the illusion that we're looking through these pine trees to the lovely snowy scene beyond. So it's very important, again, to keep things nice and tidy. So I'm just using a paintbrush to flick off a few little stray dots of embossing powder, keeping everything nice and crisp and clear and then I'm heat setting that embossing powder. So this is a cosmic shimmer embossing powder. I think it's a colour called malachite. It's just a lovely um, shimmery green embossing powder. And then once that's heat set you're going to create another set of branches on the other side. 
So once again inking up that stamp and just twisting and turning the branch so I get a variety of little pine branches coming across the edge of my picture. Taking off any excess little pieces of embossing powder and heat setting. Again, once that powder starts to melt, just move on to the next piece of embossing powder. Don't linger too long in one place, otherwise you will over melt the embossing powder. Now my instinct was, I wasn't quite happy with the branches as they were. They're quite fine, this is quite a delicate stamp, and I just felt they were a little bit too fine for my picture, so I just thought I'd try something else out. I happen to have another shade of green embossing powder on my desk, so I'm over stamping with the perfect medium and adding a different green embossing powder and this gave me a lovely two-tone effect so I've got two greens and my pine branches are just that little bit more lush and I like the look of that so I'm going to over stamp the branches that I've already got in position and this time using the moss green so I'm not trying to be exactly on top, just a little bit offset from the original branches and then adding that moss green embossing powder. So this is one of those happy accidents, definitely something I'll be using again. So I'm going to overstamp on the other side. So it did take me a little while to work out which part of the stamp that I used first time round. <laughs> there we go. So over stamping both of the branches, adding my embossing powder and then heat setting it on the other side. So this time stamping only with the dark green, I'm going to add the sentiment to the middle of the sun. So I've got a lovely Merry Christmas stamp. And this fits just nicely across the width of my stenciled sun and then I'm heat embossing that. So that's my central panel almost finished. So I'm going to attach it to the teal card stock. I'm going to be using strong sided, double sided tape because my card is a little bit warped from that um, heat embossing. And I just like to use this strong double sided tape because it flattens it all out nicely again. And then just making sure that it's central on that teal card stock. So before we add a ribbon to our card, we're going to add a little bit of snow. And I'm going to use some Distress Glitter. This is Rock Candy Distress Glitter. And it's different to other glitters in that it almost looks like sugar. It really does look like that uh, sparkly snow on the ground. So I'm going to be using that. And I'm going to be using my glue pen in order to attach it to my card. And all I'm going to be doing is adding some to the what I feel is the top of my branches. And I'm just literally drawing along those little branches on the pine or the fur. And then I'm sprinkling on that glitter. So you might not be able to see this very well on camera. And I don't think you can. But there is definite subtle sparkle as if these branches have been just given a little touch of frost so I'm going to do exactly the same technique on the rest of the branches so I'm doing one at a time to make sure that that glue doesn't dry on me so there's no precision in this I'm literally just randomly drawing in those pine needles and then sprinkling on that glitter.
And there's one more place that I'd like to add a dusting of glitter and that's along the tops of these hills. So I'm just sketching along each of those lines and then adding a sprinkling of glitter. So I think you're going to have to take my word for it that the glitter is there because the camera isn't really picking it up. So I found myself some ribbon that I think goes quite nicely with the colours so far and I'm just going to cut off a length of ribbon that's just slightly bigger than the width of my card and I'm going to attach it about an inch from the base of the panel. And I'm going to be using the double sided tape that I'm going to attach the panel to the card with. So I'm just catching in that ribbon and adding double sided tape to each of the sides of my card. So make sure that it's level. So I'm just attaching that little bit to hold it in place and then finishing adding the tape to the rest of the card. Then I'm threading the ribbon through and tying a knot. I think it's it would be a bit too heavy to have a bow so I'm just making a little knot and then cutting the ends of the ribbon at an angle. So this is all about balance, just check your knot. If you're not happy with the size of it, just trim it down a little bit more. So I'm back after just raiding my little stash of charms and I'm thinking about using a snowflake but I also have these little reindeer. I could have used either, but I think I'm going to stick with the snowy theme. And I think I'm going to pick this one. So I'm going to actually just tie a little length of embroidery thread through the top of the charm and then just stitch that into the knot on the card. A little piece of matching embroidery thread, threading on the charm and making sure you keep hold of one of the ends of the thread. Then pushing that thread or sewing that thread through the knot that we've created with the ribbon and then tying off the thread. Just leave enough give in the thread so that the snowflake can dangle freely and then again just trimming off the ends. So that's the card topper almost finished so I'm going to attach that into position and we can begin work on the card inner. So making sure it's in the centre of the card base and that just brings everything to life. It's amazing how much a frame uh, makes all the difference to your card. So working on the two pieces of card that we put to one side earlier we can attach the piece of teal to the inside of the card. As I've done most of my card with double-sided tape I might as well carry on and then just popping that in the centre of the inside of the card and then we're going to stamp the greeting in the middle. So I'm going to start out by adding a couple of branches in the bottom right and the top left and then embossing them in exactly the same way as we did before. So starting out with the dark green, brushing off any spare bits of embossing powder and then over stamping And adding the moss green. To make those pine sprigs a little bit more luxurious. So 
So I like to use a different sentiment in the middle of my card and I'm using happy everything. So just embossing with the malachite embossing powder. And then just lightly inking the edges of the panel. I'm going a little bit heavier in each of those corners where the pine branches are and then keeping it light around the rest of the panel. So using again that peacock feathers that we used to create the scene on the front of the card. It really is a nice effect just to uh, match your card inner to the front of your card. So that is attached in place with double sided tape. And then again, I'm just adding a little bit of that distress glitter to those pine branches. And as I thought I'd finished, I just looked at this snowflake and noticed that it had a few little dots on it that were perfect to add a little bit more turquoise sparkle into the mix. So I'm just using a turquoise stickles and adding a few little dots to that snowflake. And that is my card finished. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, seeing how I've created this snowy scene uh, using my own stencils cut out from cardboard in order to do so. And then using my gorgeous rubber dance stamps to create that pine forest effect to make it look like I'm peeking through some fir trees to that snowy scene beyond. So I hope I'm giving you a few ideas for your Christmas card making. This is a lovely one to put together and uh, don't forget to check out the Christmas is Coming series and I've got a couple more Christmas cards lined up to show you over the next few weeks. So if you're new to my channel and you've enjoyed this tutorial don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you're already one of my lovely subscribers then don't forget to put the thumbs up if you like what you see and I look forward to sharing more with you very soon. Don't forget to stay tuned for the links. Thank you for watching. So this first link is the quickest way to get back to Rubber Dance to check out the dimensions of this card and of course all the lovely creativity going on over there. This link is for the Christmas is Coming series. There are two videos up already showing you how to batch make Christmas card designs so that you've got plenty of cards in stock ready to send in December. If you're not ready for Christmas just yet then why not check out my Rubber Dance playlist where you'll see lots and lots of different card ideas and uh, this one is definitely a little bit more summery. Oops, back to Christmas again for this little tutorial that comes with a PDF that you can email me for should you so wish. Uh, I show you how to make this little Christmas pudding box. It's a great fun thing to put next to your place settings on your Christmas table and fill with little treats. Last but definitely not least, why not pop over to my Etsy shop where you can find workshops for larger projects such as this and there's lots of projects over there that you can make in time for Christmas. This is a tag advent idea. There's a video attached to this that shows you how it works and then you can pop over to my Etsy shop where you can purchase the full workshop and instructions. Happy crafting!